Hey everybody, what's happening? My name is Michael Whitaker. I'm director of Scorecraft Composer Academy. Have you ever been digging through your sounds and you're trying to find the right sound and you just don't want to use those stock sounds? Well, I use this technique that I'm going to show you today in my both in my film scoring and with artist production. And it's a super simple technique, but it's going to absolutely change the way your sounds are. Um, it helps to uh, make sounds evolve over time and change emotion. And so I'm going to break it down for you today, and uh, hopefully you can implement that into your own work as well. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Go ahead and smash the like and subscribe button, and we'll get started. All right, that sound was really cool, how it morphed and kind of changed emotions during the sound. It was so easy to do. All I did was in Omnisphere, which is by Spectrosonics, um, I assigned different sounds to different faders. And it's really important when you do this that you use contrasting sounds. So let's break this down so you can see the sounds I used and then you can change them around and use them in your production. All right, so here's Omnisphere. I'm in Cubase here. And in Omnisphere or any other program, you go to where you can see multiple uh, sounds and you put them on the same MIDI channel. So I've added the Bode acoustic guitar on, on the first slot, a fretless uh, Trilogy double wide bass, which is out of the Trilogy sample library, and this one called Gorgeous Analog Pad Dark. And they make a real contrast. And... Um, so what you do uh, in this is you just right click on this fader and you hit MIDI CC learn. And once you do that, then when you go to your faders and you move a fader, you'll see that it will move the slider, right? So probably you may already know how to do this. It's so simple, but now I can control all these sounds. And really what I wanna do is use these to kind of start with one sound and just kind of you can see I'm morphing one into the other so simple right but on top of that um, we also have some audio inserts I use a lot of times I'm going to use uh, this plugin called decap oops uh, it's called decapitator um, and this adds distortion, harmonic distortion. So this is really cool for um, a more aggressive sound. And, and in this point, um, I, at this point, I put some drive on this sound, but I typically go to Decapitator a lot to add subtle harmonic distortion to the sounds. Past that, um, I highly recommend uh, this plugin, which is called Valhalla Supermassive. It's free. And it's an unbelievable, expansive reverb. And you can even assign these reverbs to one of the faders and control uh, the volume of your uh, reverb, especially if you put it on an AUGS track, right? And the final thing is I just want to make sure it doesn't get out of hand uh, as far as the levels. So I'm using this T-Rax brick wall limiter, but you can use any limiter like a Waves L1 or something like that. So that's the first sound, the cinematic pad. It works great for that sort of stuff. Let's go on to sound number two. All right, so this second sound is, is really only two sounds, and um, it comes from the keyboard Dune, which is probably one of my favorite uh, analog synth kind of keyboards, but it's got also a digital edge to it as well. So um, it's probably one of my most uh, go-to keyboards, uh, uh, meaning plugins. And uh, the other is, of course, Omnisphere, and I'm using this patch called Gentle Vibrato Cording. 
And every time I put it up, it's kind of cool when you play a pad or you play a synth sound and then to add an arpeggiation. So it's like you play the sound and then move the arpeggiation, play the sound, move the arpeggiation. Um, again, it's all about just creating a change so your, your sounds don't sa uh, sound static. You know, uh, let your sound grow and move. And I think really that helps your production a lot. Always keep people's ear guessing. It's really important. Uh, keep them wanting more. Keep them listening and engaged. Um, so, you know, when you have just a static patch, um, it's fine for a lot of things. But uh, when you're really getting deeper into production and scoring, um, keep, keeping uh, new things coming, uh, it's really interesting. And it really keeps people moving forward uh, in the song and in the score as well, if you're talking about film and TV music. All right, so let's go to the third sound, which involves uh, orchestral instruments. So I love that pad. It was super emotional, right? Very simple to do here in Contact. Um, we started out by putting all the sounds on the same MIDI channel and then right-clicking on the volume fader and you get a MIDI learn. Then you move your uh, sliders on your, your faders and they're assigned to those faders. Uh, the first one is by Heaviosity, uh, Natural Forces. Uh, it's called Angel Whisperer. Uh, go ahead and feel free to steal that. Um, of course, I, I love all these libraries. At the Albion Library, these, this string patch is the Sordino patch in there, so strings with mutes. Um, any string library would probably work. And then this British Drama Toolkit I love because it, it is woodwinds that kind of chatter and move and, and ebb and flow. And I think finding sounds that, that have motion um, are really good in in score as well as um, you know maybe in a ballad. It just makes it more interesting. All right, I hope this video was useful and you're going to be able to implement this in your own productions. If you want to learn more about film scoring and music production, go to filmscoreseminar.com. I have a complete online course for you. And we also have a five-month film scoring academy if you're ready to take it to the next level and train with me personally. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.